Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I am so excited to announce the launch of my own, very own stencils from Stencil Girl Products. The stencils are inspired by the doodles that I use to embellish and finish my mixed media art journal spreads or my shareable art. They both come as a nine by 12 stencil. This one that has four different patterns on it can be cut up into four smaller stencils. Over years of using different doodles in my work, I've kept a record of them that I call doodle vocab. So that's how this set of stencils got its name. This is Squiggle Doodle, and it's based on a single line doodle that I use. So it's a little bigger, of course, and it's a little more graphic, which I love. The stencil that has four different patterns on it is actually called Doodle Vocab, and each one has its own name. This is Woven, then Drops. Here's Concrete Cracks. And finally, lines of scallops. I used all of these stencils to create this art journal spread, which has kind of a street art quality to it that I love. As you know, I love to work in layers. So I started these pages by collaging down some high contrast kind of text collage material. Then I prepped my collage with some absorbent ground so that it will receive water soluble media, which is the next layer. This is a Neocolor 2 in cobalt blue, followed by one in sky blue, which looks more like a periwinkle to me. This is a Tim Holtz Distress Crayon in Seedless Preserves. And the last one is a Neocolor 2 in Jade, one of my faves. Next, I'm going to just brush on some fluid watercolor by Ecoline, a yellow, and then a kind of pastel purple. And I'm brushing this color on in a way to activate some of the crayon, but also to avoid it so that I get more of the pure watercolor color. So I'm adding color, but I'm also kind of grunging this up by getting some of the mud going when I mix the yellow with the purple. It's giving me a variety of colors that are kind of just happening randomly without me planning very much. And that's what I like to do. I like to just throw something on there and see what happens. And if I don't end up liking it, of course, I can always cover it up. And in fact, I do end up covering a lot of it up because this is a multi-layered art journal spread, just like so many of my other art journal spreads turn out to be. Continuing on the theme with water-soluble media, I have a Color Bloom by Prima Marketing in Precious Stone, and then I have a Dilutions ink spray in Vibrant Turquoise that I'm just spraying on, and then I'm going to activate everything on there with a spray of water. And you'll see this becomes pretty saturated, and both in order to make it dry quicker and also just to kind of, you know, mellow it out a little bit, I blot it with a paper towel. While everything's still a little wet, I'm going to drop in some Dale Rowney acrylic ink. This is in Waterfall Green and it's a pearl essence color. So it's adding a little sheen and shimmer to my pages. And if you know me, it's a rare journal spread of mine if it doesn't have fluorescent pink. This acrylic ink in Luminous Opera by Holbein is just perfect. Looking at my spread at this point, I decide that I want to add a little bit more of that pale purple watercolor to my pages. It kind of disappeared when it dried, so I just wanted to add a little bit more because I just love that color too. The last water-soluble media I'm going to add here is an Infusions by Paper Artsy in Magenta. These are just powders that are highly pigmented and when you activate them with water they just bloom all over your substrate and they create some random effects. They also add like some deeper, grungier color to everything. So it's a good way to add contrast while you're adding a little more color. Everything is pretty much dry at this point, but it's still water soluble. So I'm gonna use one of my stencils. This is the Lines of Scallops Doodle Stencil. 
to use a baby wipe through it and pick up some of the infusions and the other watercolor and water soluble media that are there to get some kind of muted and kind of grungy, distressed looking pattern happening. That pale purple Echoline watercolor is already pretty muted, so I'm not really getting a great effect, but when I go back into these infusions here, I'm gonna see the effect that I'm looking for. Like my pages need a little bit of variety of color, maybe a pop of something contrasting. So I'm looking through my Neo Pastels by Caran d'Ache and I find this lemon yellow one and it's just the ticket. And of course I have Jade in my left hand because it's one of my favorites, but it's not really fitting the bill so I don't end up using it. The next color I pick out is a um, Neo Pastel once again, but this one's a purple and it's really more like a kind of a magenta pink, just adding a few marks to those lighter areas. I'm feeling like the background is pretty much complete here. So it's time to start adding the elements of my spread that are going to tell a little story. I've cut out this kind of wave or hill like mask to use underneath my stencil. I'm using the Woven Doodle stencil here and Payne's Gray acrylic. It's a heavy body acrylic. I do have a quote in mind for this spread. So that is why I am kind of creating what looks like a chain link fence effect across my pages. You'll see exactly why in a bit. Now I'm going to do a little tone on tone stenciling using the drops doodle stencil down below on this blue green area at the bottom of my spread. And I'm still using my mask cut out to mask off the woven stenciling that I just put down and not get any of this drops stenciling on top of it so that these two areas in the spread are kept separate. I'm using a Dick Blick Mac acrylic in green blue light and from experience I know that this paint is only semi opaque and I also know that because lots of the media that are below the stenciling are water soluble I'm going to get some seepage of that color through my stenciling here but that's okay with me and in fact it leads me to do something with these little drops that turns out to be quite interesting Now I'm going to use a lighter color paint up in the top portion of my pages. This is a paper artsy fresco finish paint in blush. It's a pale pink and I know it dries a little bit darker than it first appears while it's wet. I'm not pouncing through the entire stencil and I don't want to cover up too much of where I used the stencil in the past with my subtraction method and those infusions there. I kind of want a repetition effect. These lighter doodle marks show up a little bit better because they're more distinct and crisp. Mm -hmm. 
I think at a certain point in every jar journal spread, I throw in some graphite pencil scribbles. I guess it's because for me, mixed media is all about layers. It's all about the different media. So it's about variety and mixing it up from layer to layer. Now, before I start adding finishing details, I wanna add a space in my pages where I can put that quote that I was talking about earlier. I'm using that same fresco finish paper artsy paint in blush because I need this area to be lighter so that when I create the space for my quote and actually write it in, it will show up in my pages. And I can already see that I'm gonna to need to add another coat of this paint before I start working on my coat. So while that paint's drying, I'm gonna use this fine nib paint pen in black to fill in the little gaps in the stencil so that my woven doodle here looks more like a solid link fence. For that second coat of paint here, I'm just dropping in some paint and spreading it around with my fingers. This is going to give me a thicker coat and it is going to take a little bit longer to dry, but I'm sure I can find something to occupy myself during that time. <laughs> I decide that this spread is missing one of the things that I like to do in my mixed media work, and that's adding some drippage. This golden high flow acrylic in quinacridone nickel azo gold is perfect for this because it's going to add a kind of rusty random dripping effect that plays really well into my urban artscape that I've created so far. Another thing I want to do is embellish these drops stenciling down below. I want them to stand out of the page more and I want to add interest to them. So I'm doing that with some colored pencils. I didn't film this, but before I started coloring, I coated this area of my journal pages with some clear gesso. That gives me a bit of tooth so that when I'm coloring, the pages are really taking this pigment. I'm working with several pencils in blues and greens, and I wanna give each of these drops some dimension and make them pop off the page. I'm going from dark to light, so I start with a blue, which is Gentian Blue by Caran d'Ache. These are Pablo pencils from Caran d'Ache, and this green is called Opaline Green. The lighter green is a Caran d'Ache Luminance pencil, and that one is in Light Malachite Green. And I'm also using another Caran d'Ache Pablo in Turquoise Green. I'm blending the colors together in each drop, and then I'm finishing each drop by going over them and blending with the lightest color.
Once all of the drops are colored in like this, I'm going around them to accentuate the outline and give a little bit of drop shadow to each drop. This is a Faber-Castell colored pencil and it doesn't have a name for the color, but it's a deep green and it's number 158. Finally, I'm adding a highlight with my Lemon Yellow Caran d'Ache Neo Pastel to each drop, looking at where the light would be coming from. Since I added the shadow on the bottom, I know the light's coming from the top. So just a dot will do. So this gives these drops a lot of dimension and it's also kind of transforming the spread. At this point, it really started to look like urban art or graffiti and I didn't plan this. I didn't think I was going to make street art graffiti looking pages, but it transformed into that as I went along. And now my pink paint is definitely dry. So over that, I am stenciling with some Liquitex gouache in fluorescent pink, and I'm using my Concrete Cracks doodle stencil to create some lines for the journaling that I'm going to put in. I'm using this pink because I want to kind of pick up on and refer back to the pink ink that's already in the spread so that it's cohesive and it all comes together nicely. I'm also using some of that ink and a fine brush, very, very fine brush, to color in the little gaps in the stencil so that these lines are solid. And since I have some of that pink ink left over, of course I need to add a little water to it and put some splatter down into my pages. But before I add the quote, I want to add one more finishing touch to my pages. And when I saw this lunar paste on the Ranger website, I knew of course that I had to have it. Why? Because it's pink. It's also thick and it dries with a little shimmer. I thought it would be the perfect paint to use to create an art paper that I could use in my journal spread and then even later on in other projects. I'm using a tissue paper and a palette knife to just press it through my squiggle doodle stencil. So this creates a nice thin collage material that also has kind of an embossed effect. I have a few areas here that aren't as clean as others, but I'm gonna tear this up so I can use what I like. Once it's dry, I'm tearing it into pieces and adding a few of these to my journal spread. With tissue, I like to use fluid matte medium so that that tissue paper just disappears and all you see is the painted stenciled squiggle doodle. Now, finally, it's time to add my quote. The quote is, when you have more than you need, build a bigger table, not a higher fence. Because these pages really evolved into looking like graffiti street art, I looked online to see if I could find a graffiti font that I could fit in to these journal pages. Now, I couldn't have some big balloony type letters, but I did find a font that seemed small enough that I could use. I lettered the quote in first with a pencil and now I'm going over that with a paint pen 
and we'll thicken some of the lines to make it look more graffiti like and then after that see what else I can do to make it look like it's graffiti on a wall. And one of those things is to add what looks like paint dripping down from the bottoms of the letters. Another feature to add, black splatter. I'm just watering down this Stuart Simple Black. It's the blackest black, so I figure diluting it won't be an issue. To finish up my quote, I'm going to add some graffiti-like highlights to each of the letters. And to add even more dimension, I'm adding a little bit of a shadow with my graphite pencil under each of the letters. The last thing I did was accentuate some of those squiggles and the drippage in Quinacrito Nicolazzo Gold with my pink paint pen. And here it is, the final spread. I hope you enjoyed watching me create these pages. I really appreciate you watching. And if you'd like to purchase these stencils, there's a link in the description box below.